Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm going to bring you my review of the Yonex V-Core Pro 97 310. So my plan was to review the line a little and hit with the uh, HD version as well as the 310 side by side and then give one video looking at both of them, perhaps comparing them and giving you some ideas as to which one to pick. But I quickly realized when I started hitting with them that actually they were quite different and to do it justice I would need to break it down into two videos. Now I have been hitting with them one after the other and for about the last 10 days so I'm ready to review both. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see the review of the HD version as I'll be posting that up tomorrow. So Yonex's V-Core Pro line of rackets is its control orientated rackets and I was a big fan of the 2018 blue version of this racket. I actually used it for a while after a bit of customization and used it to great effect. So I felt pretty familiar with this when I started to take it on court. If we take a look at the specs that are kind of quoted for the racket a lot online, you have a 310 gram unstrung weight, nice 20 millimeter thin beam, which is constant, 1619 string pattern, which is obviously changed from the dual G version of two ago, which used to be a 1620, a 64 stiffness rating, 31 centimeter balance, relatively low swing weight at 318. Now I'll give you the specs of mine, which was obviously strung up over grip and dampened uh, a bit later on in the video. So some of the tech, well, you can't review a Yonex racket without briefly discussing the isometric head shape that's obviously they're so well known for. I've hit with so many Yonex rackets now that I feel like I have a good take on what it gives and I am quite a fan. Ultimately, I think that the isometric head shape gives you some of the characteristics of playing with a slightly bigger head size whilst retaining some of the characteristics of the actual head size of the racket. And what do I mean by that? I think the isometric shape probably does give a slightly different sweet spot and might change that sweet spot a little bit and also think it helps you therefore with regards to defending at times uh, but I think it also still enables the racket to retain some of the characteristics that you'd expect from the head size that it actually is. The racket has Yonex's NAMD material which you'll find across most of their lines and that is intended to give good flex and a nice snapback feeling and I sort of agree with that, I think that you can get that sensation. And then they talk about a 3D vector shaft which actually goes quite a long way back in the lines uh, and they talk about the sort of shaft being improved and changed a little. However, I'd question that. I mean, I've spent a long time comparing it to the 2018 version and I couldn't find any differences in design, length, shape. Here's a photo uh, for comparison purposes. And the rackets have featured this sort of cushion grip, which I think is great, uh, but it talks about having some extra mesh for dampening in the handle. Again, I, if I'm honest, I couldn't really tell the difference between the 2018 version in this racket. So taking it to the wall for those all important first impressions, I mean, that was great. You certainly got a feeling of a really maneuverable, kind of almost whippy racket with that thin beam that really cuts through the air. I also felt that it was going to be quite a precise racket I could fix on a spot and hit it. And initially on the wall, I also felt encouraged that I really might be able to hit a nice slice consistently with this, just nicely kind of consistently cutting the ball. Then moving on to initial hits on the baseline, certainly that compounded those feelings. I got a really maneuverable thin beam kind of whipping and cutting through the air. Actually felt that the 1619 pattern is quite an interesting one in this one. You get a lot of control from it, but you can, if you try, generate ample spin. Uh, didn't feel that the, the racket necessarily delivered huge easy depth but I did feel that there was some power and I did feel you can kind of transition from defense to attack really effectively and I think again that's because of that lovely thin beam makes it whip and cut through the air. 
I didn't quite get as effective on slice with the racket as I would have liked next to the wall. I think that probably could be improved with a sort of little bit more swing weight and plow through through the racket. Uh, but I didn't quite find that I could get the sort of easy depth and real cut on a slice that I'd like. And then moving on to a few kind of baseline points really positive experience. I mean, I think it has got excellent control. It's very, very accurate, nice, comfortable feel to it. The 64 flex is just about right. I think for me, it's comfortable, but it also gives you enough kind of feedback and you can definitely move from defense to attack really nicely. Uh, ultimately, that maneuverability really does come through. What I would say is that in stock form, I absolutely loved this racket on return of serve, particularly on someone's second serve. And I think the combination of that relatively good static weight at 310 um, unstrung means that you can still swing with that low swing weight really fast, but you've got a nice bit of um, weight in the racket on impact. So I really like that if you're taking an aggressive cut at the ball, I thought it was uh, a really good racket. And at net, kind of odd really, because when I was using it on the baseline, I wondered whether I'd have some stability issues with it. Uh, but overall, I wouldn't say it's an unstable racket. There were certainly times, maybe at the top, um, where it felt a touch unstable, but overall I wouldn't class it as an unstable racket. And I certainly felt that it is a racket that you could vastly improve on the stability front. On serve, another really good experience. I mean, the combination of um, that weight and the pace that you can really sort of fling the racket meant that I could get really good pace on my first serve. And I also felt there was ample spin to get a good kick second serve. So I really enjoyed the racket on serve. And so overall, I think it is a really good racket. However, what I would say is that I think it is a racket that could be seriously improved for the serious player. Now it plays well in stock form and I only played it in stock form because I thought that's the, probably the right thing to do in terms of a review for most people. But you do get the impression that this is probably a really, really good platform stick. And I think that if someone is um, even going to, at a basic level, customize their rackets, this is well worth a look. Just a little bit of weight at three and nine or 10 and two will give you some more swing weight and plow through, which I think would greatly improve it. And you'd probably take away any of those only minor stability issues that you might get at net. So I think for somebody who is um, advanced, is getting quite serious about their game and wants to play around with things and maybe build their game around a racket, I think this is a really good option. And dare I say it, I think that this probably compares pretty well to the pro staff. Obviously not the RF97, but the slightly lighter version, the 315 version that we've all used. I would say that this is slightly more comfortable, gives you a bit of room for uh, customization, which is good. So I would say people who are using other 97 square inch heads like the Wilson Ultra Tour, the new Wilson Ultra Pro, or that Pro Staff should give this a look as an alternative. Oh, pretty positive. I mean, always a fan of your next rackets and I think this is a, a pretty good stick. However, here's my one sort of beef with it. Now, I tried really hard to find differences between this green sort of 2019 release version and the 2018 uh, blue version that I also have. I couldn't find any differences in the shaft. I felt that it was very, very similar. Here's the specs of both my 2018 and 2019 version as I measured it and very, very similar. And I did have obviously different strings in it, I had Yonex Polytor Air in the blue, and I experimented with Selinko Hypergee and also Head Links in the green. So subtle differences there. But if you took those subtle differences around strings out of the equation, I honestly couldn't really tell the difference between these rackets. And I'd go as far as saying that I'm not sure that there is really any differences between that blue and green version.
So in terms of a bit of consumer advice, well, it will probably come down to what color you prefer as to whether you buy the most recent version or whether you look out for maybe the blue version that might still be hanging around from 2018. I personally like both colors. I kind of suspect that this update of the V-Core Pro line actually wasn't really about this racket. I think it was all about adding in the HD version, which is going to obviously be reviewed by me tomorrow for you. But I also maybe suspect that it was a color thing. So I don't know whether you've sort of picked up, but you tend to have themes of colors ranging through types of rackets and I wonder whether the V-Core Pros when they were updated from the Dual G going into a blue colour might have been a kind of error on the marketing department side. Obviously the E-Zone is blue and I can't help but think did they just kind of rush through a bit of an update which brought the HD racket to the market which is great but it also then solved them those potentially confusing colour messages and enabled them to change the racket to green. So a good review, I will definitely play around with it and add some customization as I had to my blue version. I'll put the lead back on my blue version as I'd taken it off to sort of hit with the blue aside next to the green, see if there was any differences and they'll definitely stay around in my bags. I think they're really good sticks that I could go to with the right customization. Uh, the HD, I'll bring that review to tomorrow because it is very different and that's a really interesting review. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up as that really helps and think about subscribing if you want to listen to further racket reviews, understand more about racket terminology and also enjoy some videos around tennis, fitness, hints and tips. See you soon.